ever dreamed of knowing heaven on earth, of sailing away to a desert island. Well, here's a story about such a dream come true. A story that starts in London at tea time, which is not surprising since it's always tea time in London. On this particular day at the house of the Honorable Mr. Bramwell, The air from America is waiting outside. The air from America? Oh, we can't keep him waiting, eh, hey, gentlemen? Well, don't stand there gaping, Bringle. Show him in immediately. Will you go in now? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm Oliver Hardy. I'm Mr. Laurel's financial exchequer. But where is Mr. Laurel? Oh, right here, Mr. Laurel is... Ah, Mr. Laurel, we've had quite a time finding you. And now, gentlemen, let me introduce the two attorneys who handled your late uncle's affairs in France and in Italy. Mr. Hardy, Mr. Bonfoy, Mr. Laurel, Signor Poltrone. How do you do? Signor Poltrone, Mr. Hardy, Mr. Bonfoy, Mr. Laurel. My name is Bramwell. Mr. Hardy. Well, gentlemen, could we get down to business? Oh, thank you, Stanley. Now, just how much was this legacy? Oh, you Americans, you never seem to believe in formalities, do you? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, there's one thing about us. We always believe in business before pleasure. You see? We had better get right to business. Your uncle was quite an eccentric. He uh, didn't believe in banks. <laughs> he insisted on keeping his money in cash. And here it is. What is it? It's money, I think. Indeed, it is money. And a very large sum. Italian lire. French francs. And English pounds. Stanley. Uh, Mr. Law, before we actually turn this money over to you, there are, of course, some administrative charges. Well, these include overhead uh, legal charges, deflation, amortization, currency fluctuation, foreign exchange, and a few other incidentals. Gentlemen. <laughs> My dear Mr. Hardy, there is another small item. What now? The taxes. To save you time, we've had them all figured out. Including, naturally, a slight fee for our services. These deductions represent income taxes, estate taxes, inheritance taxes, death taxes, and uh, living taxes. And a few other plain taxes. Gentlemen. <laughs> Uncle had left me the taxes. Is that all we get? Oh, but you also get an island. An island? And a beautiful yacht. A yacht? Yes, yes. The yacht is tied to a dock right here, see? In Marseille, France. And the island is here, in the South Sea. Gee, that sounds wonderful, Ollie. Well, that sounds swell. But. How much are the taxes on that? Oh, none. The island is absolutely tax-free. Here's your money. The papers for the boat. And this is the deed to the island. Well, now that cleans out, uh, I mean that cleans up the estate. Gentlemen, I bid you good day. Come, Stanley. Well, 
Why don't you be careful? Take a look. Here's your little boat, gentlemen. And here's your port clearance. Ah. Boy, we'll need a crew for this one. A crew? What do we need a crew for? I'm running this boat. Well, let's get on it. Why, oh, beg your pardon, Doc D. Uh, how much? 19,000. Uh, Thank you, sir. And bon voyage. And merci beaucoup. Good day. Long tomorrow. Thank you. It's a good thing you didn't take the taxes. We would have had nothing oh. left, sir. Pardon me. Thanks a lot for reminding me. I forgot about it. Thank you. Uh, monsieur. Thank you. It's much too much, sir. Much too much. Well, what did you have to open your big mouth for? Well, I didn't know it was going to take any... Come on and let's take a look at the boat. Don't you watch where you're walking. Well, I couldn't help it. Oh, never mind that. Let's see what we've got here. for four people. You can't get four people into this thing. You don't understand. Inside there's a compressed air cylinder. When you release the valve, it fills up large enough to carry four people. Well, what about me? You don't have to be insulting. Haven't I always taken care of you? You're the first one I think of. Didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Ollie. 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 Yoo -hoo. Take that snakeskin off and get that cargo aboard. What about me? What about me? Don't 
waste time like that. Throw them to me, and I'll put them there. here. There's a man in the cage. I bet it's Antoine again. But the guy must be mad. I'm a monkey, I tell you. He's a stateless man. A what? Somebody who has no nationality. Oh, he's not a bad guy, really. But no country seems to want him. He'd do anything to get back and land. Let's go, Antoine. Don't you know it's against the law to land here without a passport? Punish me. Teach me a lesson. Put me in prison. But remember that to put me in prison, you've got to let me land. How long has it been on your ship, Captain? Oh, months. He tried to get ashore at Petrokovac, Nagasaki, Caracas, Sydney, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Salonika, everywhere we stopped. All I ask for is a country. Well, get a passport. Oh, that's easy to say. How can I get a passport if I have no country? And how can I get in the country if I have no passport? Sorry, I didn't make the regulations. You're not allowed to land in this country. That's the law. Fine laws. You land monkeys without a passport, and not human beings. Take him back on board. Let's go. And food, one crate. And food, one crate. Plywood, six feet plywood. Six feet plywood. Six sheet plywood. Six sheet plywood. Sugar, one sack. Sugar, one sack. Candy, one sack. Candy, one sack. One sack. One sack. One sack. One sack. One One sack. One sack. One sack. One sack. One Don't you ever stop playing hide and seek with us? Go on, beat it and quick. But you two always stop me. Now, see here, you're probably a good stonemason. Why don't you go and work in Italy? But I'm an immigrant. That's just it, immigrant in Italy. You kidding or something? How can you immigrate to a place you've left already? Well, maybe. But once you're a thing, you're not going to leave Marseille without paying your passage. I haven't opened my mouth. Good morning, boys. Going on a vacation? We're going to the South Seas. Oh, it's a long trip there and a long way back. Yeah, but we're not coming back. You see, we own an island out there, don't we, Ollie? Uh-huh. <laughs> Say, how do you start an engine? With a mechanic, of course. We can't afford one. We haven't got any money. We did have, but they took it all for taxes. Well, don't worry. I'm going to send you a mechanic, and he won't cost you a cent. Well, everything's arranged. What is my execution? <laughs> there are two characters alongside. They own an island in the South Sea. You're invited. And you won't need a passport to get ashore. Thank you. Thank you.
morning, darling. Uh, where are we? We're here. See, right? Well, we shouldn't be. We'll have to change our course. Huh. Keep her on a course. You can eat later. Well, I'm hungry. So am I, selfish. Antoine presents his specialty, the Côte de Vaux, Garni. Ah, sounds good. Mm. I'm going to enjoy that, I know. I love Côte de in the garni, you use a small touch of garlic. Oh, I hardly use a pinch. <laughs> a man that would steal food from a friend is the smallest thing in the world. Oh, I don't know. All I hope, Stan, is that you enjoyed your role. How could I enjoy it when you stole it? What do you mean I stole it? You stole it. <laughs> You're telling... I would like you to know how happy I am to have you both as my friends. I would like to give you a toast. <laughs> I give you a friendship. Hey, friendship. friendship. Here's how.
the matter now? You know what's the matter. I want my chop varnished with garlic. You've got a lot of nerve. You want my chop after you've eaten yours. I'm sorry. Well, you should be. Just a minute. Where's my potato? Now listen. If you think I've eaten your roll and your potato and... Weigh me. Well, if you didn't, who did? You can't scare us with that. As admiral of this ship, I'll have Stanley put you in irons. What's all this about? You stole my potato. Yeah, my roll and chop. Incidentally, who's steering the boat? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I tied the wheel on its course. Well, for once, you have used your head. Thank you, Ollie. I'll try and do that more often. What was that? The motor stopped. Fix it. You're the engineer. But to tell you the truth, I'm not a mechanic. The captain on the boat cooked up that story just to get rid of me. As usual, I have to do everything myself. Get up on deck and stand by. Stand by what? Stand up the deck. We'll take this little matter up later. What do you think's wrong with it? There's no use guessing. We'll just have to take it apart and find out. In other words, use your head. What for? Well, you could use yours for a bowling ball. You mean one of those with a hole in it? Uh, Exactly. Huh. Now, give me a hand. Now, let that be a lesson to you. Tell me that before. Give me the parts and I'll put them back together. Now we've got nothing left but the sail. Give the signal you pull. Oh, what are you doing? I could have broken my arm. Who are you and what are you doing on this boat? You've got no right here. I have my rights. I am traveling as a stowaway. They didn't tell us a stowaway came with a boat. Oh. Listen, fellas, I could easily have been a stowaway on any other boat. I happen to pick this one. Then you have to find me and spoil everything. Well, we had to use the sail because the engine broke. Well, why don't you try fixing the motor? Well, we tried to, but it fell in the sea. <laughs> fell in the sea. Holy mackerel. Just my luck to be a stowaway in a boat run by two land lovers who managed to drop the engine in the ocean. The ocean. Ah! You know, I think we've offended him. What's happened? What goes on here? What? We've got a stowaway aboard. This is Antoine the chef. Giovanni Copini. Glad to meet you, sir. Uh, and this is Stanley. How'd you do? How 
glad you knew. Why don't you be careful? Come on. We can't waste all day just talking. Get that rope. Get the sail out. Go ahead. You, the fat one, get on the other side. Pull. It takes muscle to raise the sail. The fat one on the other side. All together now. Hey. In time to eat lunch. Never mind eating. What happened to my pants? I put them right there to dry. It's getting to the place that you... Hey, the boat's moving! You can... from? From a world where I'm always being told what to do and then how to do it. We don't blame you. And you, what are you playing hooky from? Texas. Yes, yeah, we don't like Texas. Hey, Antoine, what about you? Where is your home? My home? I don't know. The whole world ought to be man's country. But for me, someone seems to have locked all the doors. I can just see our island now. Palm trees, flowers, the sun to warm us, and the gentle rain.
Look at that. An island. We're on an island. Stanley, we're on it. We're on an island. Take a peep. Take a peep. I'm too puffed to peep. Uh. Oh. Look, look. Oh, boy. It's an atoll. That's what it is, an atoll. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on, brother. Yeah. Easy, easy. Yeah. Easy, easy. It's all right. It's all right. Let's go fishing now, huh? Hand me a basket. Right away. Quick, a pot, some wood. Build a fire for the Puyo bed. We'll get to put some garlic in it. Oh, without it, it wouldn't be a real Puyo bed. Still in good condition. Antoine, what time are you serving dinner? If you want to eat, you better go build a fire. And you, my boy, clean the fish. You get the paper and I'll get the wood. Ollie. Yeah? Hold this a minute, will you, Kim? You know, boys, there seems to be a lot of room for building houses here. Yeah, it sure is naked around here. Admiral? What do we do on a deserted island? Here's a man that was shipwrecked, and he did all right. Listen. Robinson Crusoe was born in the city of York. His father wanted him to become a lawyer, but young Crusoe longed to go to sea. Our modern Robinson Crusoes have gotten used to their new life. By using the latest scientific farming methods, they have tamed the wild land. And Mother Nature has supplied them with plenty of fresh water. Oscar! Oscar! as well as for the men, this island has become a real paradise. Yes, but our Garden of Eden without Eve. And Adam is bored. But, but what's this? Where are these skipping stones leading us to? To Papit, the capital of Tahiti. And who do we find? Eve. I beg your pardon, Cherie Lamour. Today is her big day. First of all, she's taking an audition at the Cacatoo, the smartest nightclub in town. And also, she's expected at the courthouse for an important occasion. She's going to marry Lieutenant Jack Fraser. Miss Lamour, this way, please. Ah! Oh, sweetheart, I'm so thrilled. 
Gilles. Hardly looks like it. You're three quarters of an hour late. You're not going to grumble about three little quarters of an hour. Marriage is a most important thing. And I should like, before proceeding any I've further... I've contract. Say a few words. What contract? Miss when we're married, we're going to share everything in common. Marriage. That's not what I'm talking about. My Marriage. contract with the Cacatoo. My debut's tomorrow night, so you'll have a chance to come and see me before you sail. Miss Lamour, if you please, won't you... Oh, but I'm listening to you, Your Honor. Miss Lamour, Lieutenant, marriage is a most important thing. Just a minute. It's most unusual, but if... But Am if I to understand feel... that you intend to continue your career after we are married? But of course, my sweetheart. You never suggested that I should give it up. I never broached the subject because I took for granted that after we were married, you'd devote yourself entirely to me. Nothing could please me more if you were here all the time. But when you spend ten months out of the year sailing the seas, what do you expect me to do? Swim behind your little barge? Hey, calm yourself, Miss Lamour. I'm very calm, Your Honor. But I'm not going to submit to this kind of blackmail. In that case, I'm not going to hang around here. You think about it. But think fast. Please, sir. Let him go away, Your Honor. I won't run after him. Do you hear me? Miss Lamour. He'll never see me again. I don't know what I'll do yet. But I'll see to it he never finds me. You boys are here, and I want to talk to you. Where were you fellas a while ago? I was down at the beach getting these fish for dinner. See? I was working in the garden. Did you see or hear anything? Just the waves. Why? I'll tell you why. Because I was down by the lagoon, and I thought I heard the engines of a big boat. Then it whistled. By the time I climbed up to see, there was nothing there. That's because it had gone. Oh. What had gone? The boat. Mm. Mm. Do you mean to tell me that you saw a boat and didn't let us know? Well, I saw it and I waved to it. But it didn't wave back, so I... Get us something to drink before I forget myself. Pardon me. What's the matter with you? I think I saw something. What are you talking about? There's a girl in the kitchen. You are absolutely right. There she is. Hello? Well, hello, fellow. Oh, how did you get here? Well, I guess you might say I was dropped by a wheel. Like the one that rides on a broom? I'm sorry for this intrusion, but you'll have to take me as a guest, I'm afraid. It will be a pleasure. I knew I should have built a guest house a long time ago. Oh, there's no place for me to stay. Oh, don't you worry your pretty little head about that. Giovanni and Antoine will move in with Stanley and me. And you can stay right here. You're very kind. Come, my little princess, and I'll show you to your boudoir. You know, I think I'm going to like this place. It's swell. You don't have to shave or anything. <laughs> I left my taxi down at the beach with all my things. Uh, uh, gentlemen, get the lady's luggage and bring it to her chateau. Thank you. What's that funny thing up there? That, my dear, is the wreckage of the good ship moment. Ah. I shall never forget the day that I found this island. It was a terrible night, dark as pitch. It was so pitch you couldn't see a hand behind your back. Exactly, <laughs> Sandy. Then all of a sudden, I spotted that harbor. I put her bow into the teeth of the gale, lashed myself to the wheel, and beached her on that pinnacle. Oh. And it's been there ever since. Well, boys, you must have had trouble getting it up so high. He read it in the book. Uh, come, my dear. Book.
Stanley, have you forgotten that we have company? Gentlemen, make yourselves comfortable. No room on my side. Well, the fair thing to do is to take turns. While one sits up, the other sleeps. And when he wakes up, we change. Now that's what I call a sport. Thank you, Ollie. That's a good idea. I sleep, and then when you wake up, I sleep again. And haven't you forgotten something? Huh? Haven't you forgotten something? Oh, good night, Ollie. I'm sorry, I... Get up and put that candle out. But you said that I... Go ahead, selfish. prepare a magnificent seagull egg omelette with fine herbs. Omelette bah! Well, today I'm going to draw the plans for a splendid villa with a big Roman bath. What are you going to do, Wally? I'm going to give you fellas a piece of my mind. Sherry's a nice girl, isn't she? 
Exquisite. Charming. Pretty, too. And we're all friends, aren't we? Of course. Naturally. Well, I make a motion that we never let a woman come between us. Agreed? Of course. I agree. Now, let's all get dressed. <laughs> Say, Ollie, where's the sandpaper? Sandpaper? In that locker. Thank you. belong to anybody. Never saw that guy before. Nobody I know. Oh. It's mine. It's a friend. It's just someone I knew once. which I hope you're going to like. What, another one? What is it? A bouillabaisse. Tell me, was your boyfriend fond of bouillabaisse? Oh, he loved it. Yes, for 
for you. It sure is easy to fool you. Did you really think we were building a refrigerator? We were afraid they'd find out, so we put on all the decorations last night. Oh. just to be a singer. You've also got to be the comedian. What are you playing now? Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? That's the fella in the picture that she carries around with her. All right. You track me down. Now what? You're wrong, baby. I never tried tracking you down. Our old friend Dolan reported he'd seen an uncharted island. My business here is to chart it. My men are out there working at it now. I suppose I ought to have my head examined, but I'm going to give you one more chance. Go and pack your things and be down at the beach in 15 minutes. What for? Well, I suppose you want to be rescued, don't you? Not by you. Lieutenant, come right away. We found something. Okay, I'll be right with you. This is your last chance. Are you coming? No. We'd better keep an eye on that guy. He looks like a man that would steal our island. Let me handle this, fellas. Why do you ask that? Because it will determine which nation owns the island. We all own it. Of course, of course. You own the island. You're the real proprietors, but some country has got to claim sovereignty. The international law specifies that an island belongs to the country whose citizen was first to set foot on it. So some country can take our island? That's right. And if that country has immigration laws? You will have to abide by those laws. Even income tax laws? Income tax laws or inheritance taxes and sales taxes. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to take our geraniums. That's it exactly. Pardon us for just one moment. Let's tell him that we all landed on the island at the same time. Yeah, we can't tell a lie. Antoine was the first to land. It was a terrible night. All right, all right. Here's how it is. I was the first man to set foot on this island. Okay. What's your name? Antoine. Antoine what? Antoine, master of cooking. N nationality? I haven't any. You see, he's what is known as a stateless man. Or, in other words, a misplaced person. You see, he's lost and he can't find himself. Listen, you've got to have a nationality. Telling me! I explain that in every port wherever I tried to land, but no country wanted to have me. Every country now will want to have you. I'll go and radio the authorities and dump it in somebody's lap. So long, gentlemen. Bye. Bye, sir. So long, Bye. <laughs>
Gente de las dificultades descubiertas por las grandes potencias. Oh, sí, el problema sobre la vida reciente de la descubierta en el Pacífico de un island que será conocido henceforth como Atoll H. I beg your pardon, Atoll K. After a fortnight of conferences, the great powers in a joint state initiative today announced the appointment of an international commission to decide which nation will be awarded sovereignty rights over the island which has emerged from the ocean only a short time ago and will be known as Atoll K. This statement was welcomed with relief in the world capital. Now it has become only a question of time before some government raises its flag over Atoll K. Some government's flag, they say. Do you hear that? Well, why don't we make a government of our own? Sherry's right. I'll write a constitution like has never been written before. Nah. Sharpen this. This will have to be a short constitution. Now, we, the people of of Crusoe land, <laughs> in order to save our island, do hereby form a government. Now, what kind of government do we want? Very little government be good, I think. Without too many laws. And no passports. No passports. And no prisons. No prisons. No dark. What? No taxes. No taxes. Say, this is getting to be a perfect government. And I will add no laws and no money. And that's all we have room for. Now, the next thing is to hold an election. I vote for myself as president, and Stanley seconds the motion. But I'm the discoverer of our island. I vote for me. You vote for me too, don't Giovanni, you? No, 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 no. Giovanni votes only for Giovanni. The electioneering is over. Sherry, count the votes. One vote for Giovanni. One vote for Antoine. One, two, three. Three votes for Oliver Crusoe. The president selected by a comfortable majority. <laughs> <laughs> As president of Crusoe land, I will now choose my cabinet. Uh, Cherie, you are my vice president. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Antoine, and you are my foreign minister. I am very proud. <laughs> uh, Giovanni, you are the minister of construction. You couldn't have made a better choice. <laughs> Well, that's that. What about me? Stanley, you are the people. I don't want to be the people. What do you mean you don't want to be the people? There are more of you than there are of us. You mean there's a lot of me? Certainly. Oh, well, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know. Mr. President, but now we will have to have a flag. Giovanni is right. We can't have a government without a flag. Can't we use this as a flag? That will be perfect. Yes, but we'll need an emblem. Wait a second. I have an idea. Keep this 
seen the dust today. Self-determination, the Constitution proposed by the government has been ratified by a unanimous vote. We have no other alternative but to recognize this new sovereign state, the Caruso Land. such laws. Yes, that would be pretty difficult. We'd be forced to change the Constitution. If you want my advice, Mr. President, call a meeting of the Cabinet. That's a good idea. Come on. We'll attend to that right now. Enjoy yourself, folks. We'll be right back. Sure is quiet out there. That's because I showed a firm hand with our proclamation. <laughs> now I'll make a tour around the island and test the public's reaction. You don't have to. They're coming to visit you. They're coming to apologize. <laughs> I knew that would bring them to their senses. Who wrote that? He did. I now put you under arrest. But he's the president. He certainly is. Why don't you hang him? You have just given me an excellent idea. You will confess everything, and then you will be hanged like gentlemen at sunrise. Thank you very much. Uh, what did you say? Why don't you keep your big mouth shut? Are you going to hang her too? Of course not. What can I say but 
Thank you. I can't believe my ears. Well, if you can't believe those ears, you can't believe anything. Put some guards around the house. I'll immediately go and start a crew building a gallows. Oh, by the way, now that I'm going to be president, I'll need that outfit. Will you accompany me, my dear? But of course. I still can't believe... Oh, shut up! <clears throat> See if the gardens are still out there. points to starboard. and the guards shoot us. You're wrong. I've just got rid of the guards outside. I put a stone in my pearl. Oh! I went with Alecto only because one of us had to remain free to save the other. What are we waiting for? Come on! No, I'm staying here. But we can't leave you here. I've got to stay here and send them in the other direction. Thank you very much. Miss. Oh, no, hurry up! Hurry up! I haven't got time to explain. You've got to run and try to catch those brutes. 
did you notice which way they went? Left way. Follow me. Checking, we're exactly on the position where the island stood. Ah, uh, no! What do you mean, no? I don't want to be rescued by him. Why not? He was too long getting here. Uh, this world of ours hey, is just a no parent. But people go on living just the same. 
Cherie Lamour is finally marrying her lieutenant, oh, no, and they look forward to many years of happily married life. You would have never dealt me. Take for your wedded wife, uh, Miss Cherie Lamour. Okay, okay. Yes, right, right. I now pronounce you man. Because you jilted me. Oh. I jilted you, yes. you say. Giovanni has gone back to his native Italy. Instead of building marble palaces, he'll go on forever building fences. Antoine has been brought back to the boat from which he ran away. Still anxious to give up this life of wandering, he tries once more his usual means of escape. But this time, he's gotten into the wrong sort of cage. As for our two heroes, after all their mishaps, they've finally gotten their inheritance, their own South Sea Island. And there, far away from all the cares of the world, they settle down to a well-earned rest. See, that sure was nice of Fraser and Cherie to land us here on our own real island, give us all this food and everything. Just like a fresh start in life. It certainly is. And they're going to bring us new supplies every six months. At last, all of our troubles are over. Yes, sir. Nothing to do from now on but eat and sleep. And nobody to tell us what to do. Hmm? What are you doing here? What are we doing here? Well, this is our island. There must be some mistake. This island has been taken over by the government for insufficient payment of inheritance taxes. Moreover, you've also been fined for the delay. It's my duty to seize your supplies and food. Take it away. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. 